When we're talking about Y-DNA, one of the concepts that comes up is genetic distance. And this can be a little bit confusing for many people. So a viewer asked, how many generations is a genetic distance of one equal to? And in this case, they had a genetic distance of 10. And so they were trying to figure out, okay, what is the conversion between generations and genetic distance so that we know what the multiplier is? It's not that easy. In fact, it would be great if it was that easy, but it's not that easy because there's a lot of different things going on. So let's go take a look at our Y-DNA matches. Now on Family Tree DNA, if you have tested with the Y-DNA, you go down to your Y-DNA results and there is your Y-DNA matches. So the first thing I want to point out with Y-DNA matches is your Y-DNA is passed down from father to son, father to son, father to son. One of the things that many people look for as far as research in Y-DNA is that patrilineal line and that surname that is attached to it. Now, I had this problem before I actually tested Y-DNA where I found out that my surname, Lee, is not the patrilineal surname once you get back four generations. There was a guy who actually changed his name to Lee, basically to hide from the law. And so I found out what this patrilineal surname was before I'd done my Y-DNA test. After I did my test, you can see here are the names. Swift, Sanders, Knuckles. They're not Lee, but they're also not Garnett. As I go further down this list, I do find some Garnets. I find some Simmons. I find some Thackers. That's like one, two, three, four, five, six different surnames in just 11 people. So my line apparently is not very stable. I'm not sure if it's the Knuckles, I'm not sure if it's the Garnett, or if it's the Sanders or one of these other ones. But obviously there was more instances such as in my family. In my family, somebody actually changed their name. In some of these other families, there might have been a NPE event that that surname got changed, or there might be name changes for other reasons. And that's why just in my line of 11 people, it's not that many, I've got six different surnames represented. There's not really any consistency there. But then when we go back to genetic distance, I can see here uh, there's four steps and six steps, and those are my closest relations. So let's go back to the homepage here, and under the see more, we wanna to go to why stir results to start to understand what these genetic differences are meaning. Now on this page, we can see a lot of letters and numbers that are not what we normally see when we're looking at autosomal DNA. Autosomal DNA, we are talking about how much shared CM, how much shared centimorgans. That has absolutely nothing to do with what you're looking at right here. Autosomal DNA shared centimorgans is looking at SNPs, SNPs, and stringing those together to create a segment. Whereas Y-DNA in this case is looking at STRS, S-T-R. That stands for short tandem repeats. In other words, there's a set of letters that's repeated multiple times. And that is what you're seeing here is first off the marker, it indicates the place on the genome. In other words, it could be, um, you know, a million spots in on the Y chromosome to get to DYS393. I don't know exactly the location of it but there's a specific location and it tells you then how many repeats. So this series of letters at that location is repeated 13 times. And you can see that for each one of these different markers that I have been tested for. Now a genetic distance is determined by how many differences between your numbers and everybody else's numbers or the matches numbers. So for instance, me and this match, we may match everything on these one through 12. But let's say that, hey, right here on DYS454, he has a 10 and I have an 11. Well, that gives us a genetic distance of one. And if we say that, oh, if we also look at DYS576, he has 19, I have 18. Well, that adds another one to it. And if we go to another one, DYS590, he has a seven, I have an eight, that adds another one to it. And maybe on this DYS511, he has a 
nine, I have a 10, that adds another one, and now we're all the way up to a genetic distance of four. Basically, these numbers can change. In other words, the number of repeats can change each generation. And so the genetic distance is in an indication of how far removed you are, but it is not generation by generation. In other words, these mutations, which may make the numbers different, don't necessarily happen every generation, but they do have to happen at a generation. And so four in this case, a genetic distance of four, indicates that, hey, there's been four times that we've had a mutation over the generations. That might equal several generations. Each one of these also mutate change at different rates. And so that all has to be added into it. And we can find this tip report by going and clicking on the little bar chart at the end of that match. So let's go and let's take a look at Mr. Sanders and I. Now, I chose Mr. Sanders because this is with 12 markers and Mr. Sanders also matches me with 67 markers. So let's look at 12 markers to begin with. What this tip report is, is it's telling me that there's a 33% chance that me and Mr. Sanders are related within four generations, okay? Only a one out of three chance. It's telling me that there's just over a 50% chance that we're related within eight generations. And it's telling me that at 12 generations, it goes up to 70. And by 24 generations, it's still only 91%. So it's, it's not that certain, even at 24 generations, which is far beyond when we're gonna find genealogical records. Let's see, your 24 generations is probably 600 years. So we're talking the, the 1400s that we might have a common ancestor. Now you'll notice at 12 markers, me and Mr. Sanders share, or we have a genetic distance of zero. In other words, all of these first 12, we match exactly. So where the differences come in is in later ones. So if we were just looking at 12, we would come up with these percentages. But since we both tested at 67, our genetic distance here is actually six. In other words, there are at least six differences between me and Mr. Sanders in these others. It looks like we might be somewhat closely related with just 12 because it's a zero, but once we go to 67, there's at least six differences. Now you'll notice a couple of things then because of that. First off, between one and four, or between within four generations, it go, drops from 33% down to 22%. Okay. So it's much less likely that we are related within four generations. And in fact, I know through four generations, again, this is just on my paternal line, I actually know all of the descendants of that and Mr. Sanders is not one of them. So I know for sure that he's not within that, which percentage wise makes sense. At eight generations, it moved from 50%, 55% up to 66%. So it actually went up. And that's because as you read this, hey, each marker has a different mutation rate. So identical genetic distances will not necessarily yield the same probabilities. In other words, a genetic distance of one for this match is not the same as a genetic distance of one for another match. So to answer this viewer's question about how many generations is a genetic distance of one equal to, it, it's not, and it is. It's not easy. It's, it's, there is no correlation directly of generations to genetic distance. There are probabilities associated with it but those probabilities are affected by where that genetic distance difference comes from, which marker has that mutation on it. But the other thing that you can see here is whereas with 12, at 24 generations, we were only 91% certain that we were within that. At 24 generations, we're 99.9%. .9%. We're basically 100% certain that we're related within 24 generations. 995 within 20, you know, 97%, within 16 and 90% within 12. So 12 generations is really only about 300 years. So there might be some records that we can find to actually link us together. Now it turns out that my line with 
where the name change happens with Garnett, I haven't been able to push that back farther than that first Garnett, James Garnett, who immigrated to the United States from England in 18, 1835, 1840, around that time frame, uh, which is only about 150 years ago. So I'm only about halfway to where me and Mr. Sanders could possibly match up with. But what we can see from this is that for lower generations, particularly that four generations, increasing in markers, even though you may go from zero genetic distance to six genetic distance, changes that percentage downward, whereas it actually increases that percentage for others. And that's just because of all the, the math that has to go into calculating these probabilities. It's not a simple answer. And so instead of trying to get a rule of thumb of how closely related this is, I would go with a couple of things. One, if it's not a genetic distance of one or zero, it's probably not worth looking at. More than likely, you're talking about people that are 300 years or more distantly related from you, and there's not going to necessarily be a paper trail for that. And two, take a look at the probabilities, because one of the things that I can do here, and again, this is with a six, generate, a six genetic distance. I know, like I said, I am not related within four generations, so I can in increase that to four generations. I can recalculate it. And now you will see that, hey, it's saying that, yeah, you could be wrong at four generations, but eight went down. In fact, all of these went down just slightly. As I push that back farther, maybe I know that, hey, it's not within six generations. Well, it's going to continuously recalculate those. And that is one of the great things um, about this, this calculation is we can put in what information we know, how far back I know I'm not related to him for certain because I know all of the relatives in that time frame. And I can see that, yeah, it's pushing more now towards that 12 rather than towards that eight. So I'm looking at really the extent as far as records. But again, this is one that was a genetic distance of six. I don't have anything closer than that on my list. You can see that, hey, this four steps, I got, I take that back. I have one person who's four. I don't have anybody who's a genetic distance of one or zero. And so I haven't done much with Y-DNA simply because of the fact that I don't have any matches close enough to do something with Y-DNA. There is no conversion between number of generations and genetic distance. Genetic distance is more of a probability determination based on where those differences are. Honestly, just look at your matches that are genetic distance of one or zero, and if you can be able to solve those, then it might be worth looking at some of the others. If you like the video, smash that like button, and you can watch this other video up here if you wanna learn something more.